I said in a previous video that we are in hell, right? And that's one side of the coin, is we are in hell in terms of systematically, in terms of what's been programmed into us. Hell represents fear. Fear is the opposite of truth. And anything that isn't truth is fear and is hell. So we don't have to experience hell. That's the other side of the coin is what I'm going to talk about this video. We could be in not the best circumstances. We don't have to choose to be programmed. I mentioned that in the previous video as well. We choose what we subscribe to by what we watch, by what we allow ourselves to think, by what we get next to, by what we indulge in, right? And at the end of the day, you just want to do what's best for you. So truth is the only thing that stands the test of time. So despite us being programmed by social media, by our friends, by the system, uh, by many things, we don't have to engage. We choose how we engage with everything. So what I want to speak about this video is heaven and hell is in your experience, is in your mind. The concept of heaven and hell exists in your mind. There could be hell around you and you could still be in heaven because you're not perceiving it that way. You're not giving permission to the external world or the, to the things around you to have power over you because the power is within you, is within your awareness. Awareness is power. God is power. So we suffer psychologically. 90, 95% of our suffering is psychological if you haven't noticed. Most of us are in first world country that are watching this. And for the most part, we don't suffer physically. Like we don't really get into fights often, like physical fights. Everything is mental. Our suffering is mental. 95% of our suffering is mental. It's so fascinating to me because we're not in the jungle anymore. Some of us are in different countries, but for the most part, we're not in the jungle. We're in the concrete jungle. We're on the land. We're in the cities. We're in suburban, urban terrain, right? So there's no lions. There's no hyenas. There's none of that. But yet we still feel fear on a high scale globally and everyone is just feeling a lot of fear and a lot of people are in a constant state of anxiety but why because we're not in the jungle anymore so our brain hasn't evolved to where it can differentiate a real threat like a physical threat versus something that is in the mind something that is psychological it can't differentiate the two and you know this like when you watch a movie. If you watch a horror film or any sort of movie that makes you afraid, you're just watching a screen. And you know this, but you forget or you overlook the fact that you're just watching a screen and it's scaring the shit out of you. And you're scared as hell as if there's a lion next to you but it's just a screen with images. But yet you're still afraid. So the brain can't differentiate a real threat. It just feels fear. And it just reacts. It just reacts based on images, based on the environment. And most of our suffering comes from psychology, our mental chatter, our analysis of situations in a negative way, our experiences with other people, 
because as I said, there's no lions here. There's only other people. So our anxiety, our fear stems from how we see situations. So we need to realize that we are not our thoughts. It's just our thoughts mainly that give us suffering. In fact, it is our thoughts, but they're not our thoughts. That's the assumption that we make. Thoughts are just a program. If you notice, whatever your thoughts are, are just based on what's in your environment, what you experienced that day. And then whatever's happening around you, your thoughts will arise based on that. But they happen so quickly that you latch onto them and ride the wave and get carried out and get lost in thoughts. And then one thought and then another thought and they carry momentum. They build on each other. And as they build and as they build, now you're going into a rabbit hole of one thought after the next and usually negative thoughts and hypercriticalness and over being over analytical over something that may have been just very simple or minuscule or not that important. And then we get so scared, we get so afraid because it's this we give right we give power to the momentum of momentum of thoughts that are happening so quickly. And we forget that we are the space behind the thoughts. We are the awareness that the thoughts dwell in. We are not the thoughts themselves. The thoughts, they just come and go. It's just a program. So when you're in a situation or just as you are, notice when a thought arises and notice when cer certain patterns arise because we have a program within us that is repetitive, our brain. If you notice, you'll think a lot of the same thoughts, similar thoughts, or you have a similar way of seeing things. You have similar thoughts that keep arising is because you keep feeding into them and you get carried away with the momentum. Instead, when something happens in your external environment and you have an inclination to just quickly think about it in this way or react in this way, or you have a certain reflex, it's a reflex. We're unconsciously just having a reflex or a quick reaction to our environment. And so we get carried away into that. The next time you have a reflex, see from awareness and watch, watch the tendency Watch the tendency for you to move, for you to react, for you to get carried away, for you to indulge in thoughts. For a split second, smaller than a fraction of a second, if you notice, if you watch carefully, you can see that tendency. Every time you watch and don't give in to the tendency to get carried away, you are rewriting the programming and you are unprogramming yourself. This is how you unprogram yourself, is just by watching. Watching where you would normally react. Watching the tendency for you to react. And we have many triggers from the external environment. So it can come from anything and anywhere. It's just to gently watch without any judgment without any need to fix or change, you need to first be able to just see what's happening. So this is how you unchain yourself from the programming. So things can be happening in your external environment, but you're not carried away easily by what's happening. You don't want to just be reacting compulsively to everything and losing your center, losing your ground. 
losing your awareness, losing your power so easily. You know, a lot of us, we lose our power so easily by trivial things. So don't move. When you want to move and you want to be reactive to your environment, don't do anything other than just watch. And you'll notice, oh, that's where I was going to move or to say something or to get up and do something about that uncomfortable thought or that uncomfortable emotion or feeling. And you're constantly watching and seeing where you would have reacted. It's, and you'll see the sneaky nature of the mind, how sneaky the mind is in convincing you something is so real or you need to do something about something all the time. And you need to be constantly reacting to everything. Because in all reality, as I said, we're in the concrete jungle. We're not in the real jungle. So there aren't many issues that we face that are real problems. Of course, there are real problems that we face. But even those can be addressed for what they are. You know, even real problems, at the end of the day, usually it's just... Either you take action or you have to ride it out or it's out of your control or you take action. There's, there's only one or the other. You take action or it's out of your control. So we don't need to obsessively obsess or overthink things that are out of our control. And as I said earlier, heaven and hell is in your state of consciousness, is in your state of mind. So whatever's happening externally can be happening, but we are putting labels on these experiences. It's just objects moving around or things being said, things are just happening, things are always happening. But we choose from what level of consciousness we choose to engage in all of these things. Usually, nothing is really happening. It seems like so much is happening, but nothing is really happening. What people are working, going to the shops, at a cafe, doing things, on your computer, doing things, getting ready for something, doing work, exercising. These are just things to do. They're not as important as we make them seem. And 95% of our suffering is from, as I said, psychological drama. But drama isn't real issues a lot of the time. It's just drama. It's just our own egos clashing with other egos and things are happening. Fireworks are happening. But what is it based in? Is it based in something that is a real issue? something that is actually serious or is it just our own drama or our own pettiness so this will really empower you is to operate from this space of awareness to realize you are not your ego you are not your thoughts and you don't even have to believe what i'm saying you can see this from your own experience if you allow yourself to rest in yourself to rest in your deepest core without suppressing anything that's arising in your situation, in your experience. Make fear your best friend. Don't run away from anything, any emotion, any sensation. Face your darkness and that's how you transcend it and liberate yourself. When you face your darkness, see, darkness is an illusion. The only thing that's real is light. When you face your darkness, it, you realize that it isn't that bad. 
it's it's okay you can do it and as you face your darkness you realize that all that was really there was light and the darkness is an illusion because in the same way fear is an illusion it appears to be scary and dark and don't go there that's the illusion because underneath it is love fear is an illusion because it's just being afraid but it's not about being afraid of something in particular it's just being afraid of being afraid being afraid is the feeling that you don't want to feel so if you allow yourself to be afraid, there's nowhere to go. And the mind will be afraid of everything. The mind is a coward. Our thoughts are coward. It's designed that way. We're designed to... seek out negativity first. We focus on negativity first, our brain does. Our brain is wired that way. If you don't if you notice in your own experience, just every day, everyday situations are happening in your everyday experience, one day at a time, from day to day. If you notice your brain latches onto negative experiences more so than positive experiences or neutral experiences. So whatever's happening during the day, you're going to work, you're talking to some friends or some colleagues or some people. And if anything happens negative, you will remember it. Your memory of it will be loud. Positive things we remember as well. Neutral things we tend to not even pick up like how many neutral things are happening in your daily experience every day that you don't remember at all your brain has no memory of it because it serves no purpose your brain wants to create memory of negative things because it's your survival mechanism to remember hey that's negative be afraid of this because we need to run away or get away your brain is designed to be in survival mode 24 7 your brain your ego is survival mode but as i said we're not in a jungle anymore so we need to allow awareness to prevail to be our number one go-to not our ego because our ego or our brain is quote unquote dumb it's it's not dumb but it's dumb because, as I said, it doesn't know the difference between a scary movie and something that is actually threatening. So you need to discern and to see from a space of awareness. And just watch how you label experiences. Watch how your brain has a tendency to label experiences as negative first watch how your mind has a tendency to take a position on certain experiences and want to defend that position it feels like it's attacked it feels like it was hurt in a situation it's always taking a position when you see from the space of awareness you're not taking any position you're just watching this tendency that wants to take position that wants to defend, you're watching the ego, you're watching your thoughts, so that you're not enslaved by your thoughts, by your ego anymore. Because we're truly not our thoughts. How can we be? We weren't always thinking. Thinking arises in our experience. Emotions arise in our experience people, places, things, they all arise in our experience, in our awareness. The one thing that doesn't change is awareness itself. 
the one thing that doesn't disappear is awareness itself. Do you remember a time in your own experience where you've not been aware? No. You only know awareness. You only know knowing. Things are always changing within your experience, but has your experience, has your awareness ever changed? No, it's been completely untouched by any changes, any modulations that are happening in your experience. So this process is happening so fast, so unconsciously, so automatically, that we so quickly latch onto our thoughts, we so quickly attach to our thoughts and get carried away by them. And we believe our thoughts, we believe they're real, because we don't have this space, we haven't cultivated this space, and we're not abiding and residing in this space first and just watching things that appear in our experience, in our bubble of experience. And so this is the cause of our suffering. So Everything related to our mind, our ego, is survival, is completely worldly and survival related. So in the Bible, for example, when it talks about the kingdom of heaven, when we talk about our soul, when we talk about awareness, we are talking about beyond the ego, beyond survival, beyond the daily stories, beyond the stories of the mind, beyond the daily dramas, beyond the appearance, the appearances that are appearing, arising, disappearing, beyond anything related to the body, to what the mind wants, what the mind wants to conquer, achieve, get, everything survival related is only related to your ego and your ego's desires. And so in that same package, you'll have desire and you'll have fear. Now we're going beyond desire and fear. We're watching desire and fear arise. Everything related to your ego is your personal story, is who you think you are, your name, your identity, your achievements, your hobbies, your friends, your this, your that, all of this is a story held within the space of awareness of who you really are. So the way to not get lost in all of this drama, in all of this mental chatter is to abide in this space. Nothing can affect you. Just like in a movie, no matter how scary it is, no matter how much violence or horror seems to be on the screen in the movie, it can't affect the screen. The images on the screen don't affect the screen. Of course they don't. We are the screen. Our thoughts, our beliefs, our fears, our dramas, our worries, our concerns, they just come and go. The worries that you have now were once different five years ago, ten years ago, one year ago. 
they're just constantly moving, changing, changing shape as you move from one place to the next, as you grow, they change. But what doesn't change is the screen. The movies on the screen change. Different movies, different TV shows, commercial break. Back to the TV show, commercial break, back to the TV show. All while all this is happening, Beauty and the Beast, uh, sitcoms, comedy, horror, pain, drama, laughter, sad stories. Someone, their dog died in the movie. Their partner died, Titanic. War films. People dying, people getting shot, this happening, all of this drama is happening. From one movie to the next, life is like this. So much drama, so much happening on the screen that we get lost in the images and forget that we're just the screen. We get so lost in the movie that we forget that we're even watching the movie. And we're untouched by the images and by what's arising in the movie. The screen is always untouched. When you turn the movie off, that's when you see the screen. And you realize, oh, it was just the screen all along. So realizing that you're the screen allows you to choose what you engage with. You still engage with the movie, you still participate in the movie. But you get to choose what you give power to. What means what. Two people could be watching a movie. One person could be very afraid by uh, what they see, by the images they see. And another person can be not afraid at all. It's due to the perception, how they're viewing what they're viewing. The meaning that they're putting on to these images, getting carried away by the images in the movie. So that's it. Just understand that you are the screen, you are awareness, you are power, and you get to choose what you give power to by what you give attention to. And try to look at things with a naked eye. Not through your ego, just look at things with a naked eye. That's how you have the utmost clarity in any situation. Is by not giving into your ego's tendency to color certain experiences and events. That's what we're doing a lot of the time is things are happening, but we color them, right? It's like going out into the snow and wearing blue tinted glasses. And then so the snow appears to be blue, but it's really white. The snow is white, but we, from our perception, we put on those glasses and now it appears to be different. So a situation could be just a situation, but we make it more, we give it momentum, we give it more meaning than it needs or it, or it even is. And then we create a, a feedback loop and we create a story or an idea of what this means and then we suffer because of it, because we indulge into making too many meanings out of things. Instead of just seeing it clearly and relaxing into this space of awareness. So, 
I think I'll leave the video there. This video is more of a slow video. I'm talking slow. It's like meditation and giving the message at the same time. Ninety-five percent of our suffering is psychological, man. In other words, ninety-five percent of our suffering is unnecessary. And we create our own suffering, something that humans can only do. Animals don't create their own suffering. They suffer. They experience pain directly through their environment when they get bitten, when they get attacked, when things are happening. But they don't have the ability to think like the way we do. They don't have thoughts because they don't have an ego. They don't have a self-identity. They're just immersed with their environment, reacting. They're completely in reactionary mode with their environment. They don't have the ability to be conscious like we are. They don't have the ability to self-reflect, to self-analyze, because all of that is through thought. So this dimension of thought is a gift and a curse if we don't know how to, if we don't understand it, if we don't understand that we're not our thoughts. If we don't understand that we're being programmed by an, our environment and that we need to be aware, there needs to be awareness with ego, not just ego, awareness and ego. Otherwise, we're no better than the animals, just reacting to everything and having no clarity as to what's going on. So yeah, I'll leave the video there. Thank you for listening. Peace, and I'll see you in the next one.